Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. But let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Enacted Throw, who says, Am I the a-hole for telling my parents I can't wait to move out? Hi everyone, for as long as I remember, I've been the child my parents expect the most from, yet give the least to. An example is I'm a medical school applicant. I went to the cheapest state school and I'm a paid intern at a cardiologist office. I have yet to hear my parents congratulate me or even say they are proud of me. My older sister went to the most expensive school for undergrad and the most expensive nursing school. In total, her tuition cost about 500,000. To add, they got her a gift when she applied to undergraduate schools. When she got in, when she graduated, when she got into nursing school, when she graduated, and when she passed her NCLEX, which I think stands for the National Council Licensure Examination, basically the licensing of nurses. I have yet to receive anything, even an affirmation statement. Thankfully, I can say my family is comfortable financially, but I do my best to avoid any additional costs for them, hence the cheapest schools possible. On to the issue. They expect me to watch after our dog and my sister's kid every waking moment of the day. I haven't had any time to myself because of this. I have plans. Nope, can't have them, gotta stay home and watch the dog so my parents can go out. Wanna watch a movie? Nope, can't, my sister needs me to do her laundry. And if I say no, it turns into an issue. There's so many examples of this, but my cup overflowed when I was studying for the MCAT medical college admission test and they did not give me even enough respect to leave me alone to study. I was constantly watching after my dog, catering to them and their guests and taking care of my then pregnant sister as if she doesn't have a husband. I ended up having to retake. Today in the car, my mum asked if I'd move out if I get into an out of state school and I said in a heartbeat. She was visibly upset and asked why in a pretty angry manner. I mentioned all of the above reasons and then added, if I stay here, you guys will be the reason I fail academically. My whole family isn't talking to me now. Am I the a-hole? I know I need privacy and a stress-free study space for when I'm studying to become a doctor, but seeing how upset my mum got made me feel bad, so I don't know. Edit to add, a few of you mentioned moving in with someone. I responded with how my grandparents have offered for me to move in with them, but how that resulted. In the comments additionally i pay for everything of mine the only thing i don't pay for is a roof over my head which i am thankful for someone mentioned confusion with my thankful portion of my parents being comfortable yes they are comfortable enough but that doesn't mean they cover my expenses and whatever they have covered i have eventually paid them back another thing to add is i've mentioned in a comment a while back that they mentioned they would help with medical school tuition but as i also said in that comment I don't know how likely that situation would be. I'll try to update if anything else occurs. I'm hopeful me saying this to them today would maybe make them rethink how they've been towards me. And a slight update. My mum came into my room today and told me her and my dad want to set up a family meeting tonight with my sister. I told them only if my SO, uncle and aunt can be there too. If this happens, I'll let you all know. And I know this is going to sound really harsh coming from me, but I'm just sort of basing it on the amount of stories we read with these golden child situations. And I really can't see them changing in this. It just sounds like it's been going on for too long and your family is taking advantage of you. In these situations, I'd love to know like the thoughts of the sibling on this. What are they thinking? Seeing your sister or brother being treated like this and you're a part of it as well. Do they ever step back and think, you know, this is not right? Or are they just happy to go along with it? And, uh, you know, obviously it's, it must be the latter at the moment because it's happening. But I always find that just crazy. But in the comments, Curious One says, not the a-hole. No wonder your parents are upset though. Hearing your child say you're a bad parent is even more rankling and hurtful when deep down you know they have a legitimate grievance. Plus now they know that they will be losing their house health. OP responded and said my dad specifically said, Who's going to watch the dog? Don't move out, it'd be so hard to figure it out. When I mentioned applying to out-of-state schools. Okay, Difference replies to that and says, Please go to an out-of-state school. They do not care about you or your schooling. It seems like they subconsciously or consciously want you to fail so you're forced to continue living there. 
OP responded saying, I got an interview for a school that's across the country, so I'm very hopeful. Unhappy Coffee says, not the a-hole. Your sister is clearly the golden child and you're being taken advantage of. Move out as soon as you can. OP responds saying, I just feel unappreciated. A simple I'm proud of you is literally more than any monetary gift for me at this point. My entire extended family sees clear divide in treatment and treats me how I wish my parents treated me. When my uncle found out I applied to medical schools, he sent me flowers and sent me the cutest message describing his appreciation for me and all I do for his kids and myself. Sloth Lord says, not the a-hole. If there's any student accommodation you can get access to, get out of there. It's one thing to do your part around the house, but being your sister's nanny is above and beyond. OP says, thankfully, whatever I've been making with my current job, I've opened a savings account and put it all in there. So hopefully that'd be enough to help with housing. And I'm sick of literally feeling like her nanny, not even her kids. She has a whole husband who she can't ask any favors from. Safe replies and says, hey, but why don't you stop watching the kids and the dog? OP says, I currently live with them and don't have access to the means as of yet to move out. If I refuse, it becomes a major issue involving major arguments, them threatening to cut me off, which I can't afford right now at all. Whatever I've saved from my current job wouldn't be enough, but by the time I get in and actually need to move, I'd have enough. Hope this makes sense. Horror replies to that and says, that's bordering financial abuse, and I rarely say that. This word gets thrown around way too often. At least you have some savings. Can you stay with a friend if the situation gets worse? Always good to have a backup plan. OP responds saying, my grandparents are absolute angels and have always offered me to stay with them. I've taken the offer many times, but I just feel too much of a burden on them. I don't want them to have any negative energy or conflict around them. Horror replies again and says, if your grandparents offered this in full knowledge of your situation, assuming they also agree that your parents are taking advantage of you and mistreating you, perhaps you should consider it. They probably know what they'd be getting into, but you can discuss that concern with them. You could help them around the house, which they probably need more than your parents. You could contribute financially too. It could be a win-win. OP replies saying, so this was the case the multiple times I moved in with them. I helped contribute in many ways, especially physically and financially. What would usually happen during this time was I'd move in with them. Endless calls would start, not only to me, but also their home phone. But when I wouldn't respond, they would show up and a huge argument and fight would occur. I absolutely love my grandparents and all they've done and continue to do, but they're at an age where I really don't want to put this energy and conflict around them. One of the times my grandpa ended up having a panic attack during the argument and I rushed him to the emergency because he had exact symptoms of a heart attack. I just need to ride this out till I get in somewhere unless I can somehow, some way, move out sooner. And OP adds one more comment just for a bit of background info who says, I've been seeing a therapist for many years now. My grandparents and uncle and aunt know everything. That's why I asked for them to come tonight too. Just not my grandparents. The health is too fragile. My mail goes to my grandparents. They haven't looked through my phone in the last three years, so I don't really worry about that. And I'm dead set on leaving this house. No amount of their tears are going to hold me back. So then OP continues with her update and says, Hey everyone, I have an update for you all. Thank you to those that have given their advice, wisdom and kind words. Thank you to those for their concern for my well-being. It means a lot. After this morning when my mum came in to tell me about the meeting, I called my SO, been together for six years now, who ended up seeing this post. He said he wished he can take me out of this situation sooner. His parents depend on him in many ways, medically and financially, but he promised me the second I get into any school that him and I would start apartment hunting so we'd live together. In that moment, I couldn't stop crying from how happy I felt. He doesn't want me moving out on my own because he has before and he knows how demanding it could be, especially since I'll be in school and won't have the opportunity to work as often as I do now. So if he could contribute in any way to lessen my load, he said he would. I then called my uncle and we spoke for a bit, mostly him reassuring me and comforting me while I cried. He said he'd definitely come and he did. Someone mentioned him being a great person. You're going to love him even more. So when they all arrived, we all sat in my living room and my dad started the conversation with, why do you feel the need to move out in a heartbeat? My uncle then instantly pretty much exploded on him, telling both my mum and dad how horrible they've treated me over the years, how unfair they've been and the lack of reassurance they've given me. My aunt, happens to be a licensed therapist, contributed to the conversation and explained how mentally, emotionally and financially abusive they've been towards me. 
This entire time, my parents did not utter a single word, just my mum crying. My sister, however, she got the worst of it. She decided it would be smart to say, why don't you ask for stuff? And my SO then mentioned, I've asked for them to tell me they're proud rather than lecturing or telling me I can always do better. And they still don't. I then added after this how I watch after their kid, do their chores and housework, and how her husband doesn't contribute in any way. My parents and his parents financially support them. My uncle laughed at her. I kind of felt bad because she started crying because of how irresponsible they are at ages 28 female and 29 male. After this, my uncle, bless his heart, he was in tears at this point, told them if he could have seen the future when I was born, he would have found a way to take me in as his own. Moreover, I want to try to keep this short just so it's not too long to read. My parents ended up having their butts handed to them by my aunt, uncle, SO and myself. They later finally came to the understanding that they have been crappy. Per my dad's words, I didn't realize how bad it had gotten until now. My mum just kept crying and saying she's sorry and how she also didn't realize that she began acting towards me the way her parents were with her. Not the generational trauma. The end of the conversation was my SO telling them, whether they liked it or not, I will be moving out eventually. And there is nothing they can do about it. I need to have my space, not only for studying, but for my healing journey. They agreed that this might be the best and it could lead to a better relationship. Additionally, my aunt suggested group therapy, which they also agreed to. Personally, I don't know. I see this as a good outcome from what I'm used to. There's usually more yelling and back and forth arguing. I'm hoping I'm not being naive and thinking they understood, but after my uncle and aunt left, my dad came into my room with tears too and just kept saying sorry. I've been emotionally distraught and mentally exhausted over this last day. I don't know if I can forgive because I definitely can't forget, but that's something I can come to grow peace with. This feels like such a bittersweet resolution. Thank you all for your kind words and advice. I really didn't think this would get this much traction. I had posted at a late hour hoping it wouldn't because I didn't want anyone to find it. But again, my eternal thanks and I hope you all have a blessed, successful and happy year to come. Opie then adds a couple of different comments which says, Honestly, I really didn't think they'd ever apologize or even admit to their faults. I just think them hearing it from my uncle, aunt and SO made them really aware of how visible their unfairness had been. And then someone's a bit worried about, you know, they're going to go back to the way they were. And Opie replies and says, this is what I'm worried for too. It seems very half and half. Either our relationship will grow better or bitter after I leave. I think I'll post a small update if their behavior truly changes. After the meeting alone, I needed to leave my house and I'm currently sleeping over at my SO's house. They haven't called once. They didn't make it an issue that I wouldn't be watching the dog either, which was surprising. And personally, I'm not sure how I feel about that ending. I don't think, I, I'd love to think, you know, that they're going to change and they're going to realize the error of their ways. And, and like OP said, they're not sure if they can forgive them. And, and I don't blame OP for that at all. They don't have to forgive them. But it, it felt weird to me that when they was confronted by all these people, then suddenly, oh, I can't believe we've done that. I didn't realize how bad that had gotten. I mean, what the hell? She was doing stuff like her pregnant married sister's laundry. But whatever happens going forward, I hope for OP that a journey with a healing process goes as well as it can. And eventually she may have to cut these people off because they may not change. There's a good chance they may not change. They may just be expecting OP to move on now because they've said sorry, which just isn't how it works. But I guess we may find out in the future. What do you guys make of this situation? What would you say to OP? Do you think the parents will change? The sister will change? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. And our next story was cross-posted onto on our subreddit from Am I the A-Hole from Dragnia cross-posted it and it's from Cautious Doubt. And the story's titled, Am I the A-Hole? I sold the PS4 my brother gave to my son for Christmas. My son is 15 years old. He's the eldest and a gifted student. I have to admit that I'm strict in his education, but I want nothing but the best for him. And to have the academic opportunities I didn't have. My wife and I are very proud of him. I think one of the reasons why he's so successful is because we don't allow anything that might distract him from his studies. We also hire tutors and private professors and after school activities. Some people might say this is too much, but he never complained or rebelled. So we think we're doing it well. 
However, this Christmas, my brother came to visit in the morning. He came with a wrapped box for my son and other little gifts for our younger children. He gave the box to my son just to find out is a PS4. He explained that he bought a PS5 and this was his previous PS4, so he gave it to my son. Because of his grades, I said nothing at the moment. They plugged it into the TV and started playing a bit. Later, my brother went to the kitchen and we spoke in private. I told him that video games might distract my son from his studies and he should have discussed it with me beforehand. He brushed it off, saying that he is doing okay and that won't distract him. The following days, he used that console almost every moment he was awakened and even let his little brothers play too. After the new year, when he was closer to going back to his private classes, he was still playing many hours a day. I warned him that if this behavior continues, after his private classes restarted, the PS4 will be gone. He begged me not to take it away and promised to do not play that many hours. He started his private classes and will be back to school soon. However, he has still been playing after coming back from his classes, saying that he has finished his assignments, but I see him way too distracted. So while he was out of home, I took the PS4 and sold it, previous online listing. He wasn't happy at all when he found out, but I told him that this was a distraction to him and didn't keep his promise. Then he told everything to my brother, who insulted me over the phone for selling a Christmas gift. I told him this was his fault for gifting the video game without talking to me first. My son is focused on his studies again, but isn't talking to me. And even my wife is saying I was too harsh and I should trust him more. Our other kids are also avoiding me and pretending to be busy when I enter the same room as them. Edit, and okay, I discuss with my wife what to do. She might read some of your comments. I appreciate the very few people who aren't being hostile in the comments. So you can already see where this one's going to go from that last little edit. Wow, this reminded me of a story that happened in my life and one that I've talked about in some time. So I may cover that after the comments and, and just let you know what happened there. But Victorian Platypus says, Has it occurred to you that the reason your son spent all his time on the PS4 is because you and your wife have been so focused on his academic success that you failed to teach him how to manage his own time and the value of moderation? Because that's the problem here. And he will crash and burn once he's in college if you don't start more balanced parenting right now. Take this as a massive red flag it is. You're the a-hole. Names are too hard for me says you're the a-hole. Speaking as a former child in the same circumstances of your child. Overbearing parent focused on academics that doesn't always work out the way you want it to. I was the smartest kid in school. My parents never let me do anything fun. Once I went off to college, I figured out I don't actually like school. I still graduated, but in a major of my own choosing, and I went off into a career my parents never imagined. I'm happy while they're still lamenting over my career choices. And you know what? I don't give a single crap what they think. I also barely talk to them now because they never bothered to forge an actual relationship with me when I was a child. Grades were more important to them than me. So all I gotta say is stop being an a-hole and appreciate your child for whoever they might be. Stop forcing your own wants onto them. Slash end rant. Don't trust it says, you're the a-hole. And quotes the following days, he used that console almost every moment he was awakened. And then says, this is what happens when you deprive someone of something for so long. Have you ever allowed your kid to be a kid? This has happened because by withholding normal childhood experiences, you never gave them the opportunity to find a healthy balance between work and play. The second he is no longer under your control, he will make up for lost time. Good for him. And the comments just pretty much continued along that path. And, you know, I'm not saying the story that I'm going to say right now is exactly the same as this will happen or anything like that. But it is a memory that was brought up as I was reading it. And I had a friend who I knew when I was younger, still know now, but I haven't been in contact for a few years now. We were friends in our first school, second school, and we sort of lost, started to lose touch in, in, in our high school, basically. We basically just had different sets of friends. But during the first years, we'd go around to each other's houses and, you know, he'd come play on my Nintendo 64, which he didn't have then. So he always loved playing it. Face to face, his parents always seemed like lovely people to me, his sister too. But when I sort of left school, I started hearing stories about what was going on in the background throughout his life. And it's heartbreaking, honestly. My friend's grandfather was a pretty famous politician, old school politician, not, not working these days. 
and his family's all academics, professors, etc, etc. So they valued education pretty highly. And my friend growing up was not always available to play because like this story, he always had extra classes. He had piano lessons. He had all sorts going on all the time. I couldn't keep up with what he was doing. Well, you know, me just sat there kicking a football around the field. <laughs> and I remember one of the few times I, I went round his house and he was massively into Warhammer sets. And I remember going into his room and there was just boxes. And I'm, I, I can't. I can picture it, but I can't count how many, but there was hundreds of boxes of these sets. They were pretty well off. You have to be to have that many sets of Warhammer, I think. And he had a little area for painting them, like all the paints you could possibly get, like a whole wall of these paints. But there was no completed models. There was like probably a small handful of completed models. And I was like, how come you got all these brand new boxes kind of thing? And I can sort of never forget the look on his face and and the way he said it because he sort of like looked down at the time and he's sort of like i don't i'm not allowed to to get them out and and use them until i've done my studies but then i'm usually too tired and just thinking about that back then is bringing tears to my eyes because of what sort of come next it continued apparently he was pressured all the way through school and this part, what I'm saying is just hearsay. So you have to take from that what you will. And by the time he had left high school, which I wasn't aware of, he was uh, severely depressed. He got into various substances and totally lost touch with reality. And he had developed psychosis, which eventually led to him being put into a mental health center for a time. And apparently his mental health still isn't great to this day from what I've heard. And I did try to reach out to him once on social media, but it just sort of went unanswered and I have no other way of getting in contact with him. I'd love to know how he was doing these days. But again, I would just like to reiterate, I don't know the full extent of his mental health. I don't really know if the underlying cause was the amount of studying he'd done. But reading this story, that certainly did pop into my head and the memories I had of him growing up and what he went through. What do you guys make of today's collection of stories? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. Getting involved in the story you'll love, support and time always means the absolute world to me. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Much love.